but but he uh, got on the outside and uh, you know that outside lane really seems to keep running i still think he's in a whole lot for, uh, for a while Mike side by side down in turn one coming up out of turn two boy labani is right there he is not going to let this one get away i tell you i'm sure terry's going to drive on into turn one turn three off of the deep this is it Skinner ekes out an advantage. Will Labonte cross and dive under? He'll try it. Single file off the corner. Labonte can't get there. Mike Skinner <laughs> will go to victory lane. Wow, Mike Skinner done everything but a left turn coming off that corner. Wow, was that truck loose. Labonte threw everything he had at Skinner. Sedgwick is underneath Carilli oh, and he's spun it, spun it, spun it. Sedgwick trying to pick up a position. White flag out. Will they throw the checker? Yes. The, the checker flag falls on Ron Hornaday. The checkered flag fell. The spin came on the last lap. Hornaday did it when it mattered. Congratulations to the Earnhardt family. Watch it back at North Wilkes. And did we get our money's worth today from the NASCAR Craftsman Super Trucks? Trader once again. Looking through the traffic. And man, he's really put the distance on him now. We should get the checkered flag this time. We're on the white flag lap. And Ken Schrader comes by. Checkered flag has waved. Ken Schrader has won. Jeff Bodine second. It's going to be a great win. So Ron Hornaday Jr. is looking terrific as he comes to the final set of turns. Butch Miller has moved around Jack Sprague and moved into fifth place. And Ron Hornaday Jr. takes round number four of the NASCAR Super Trucks. Very, very smart drive for the day, and quite a few surprises here. Skinner finishes in third. The order is Hornaday, and then Sedgwick, Bliss, and then Mike Skinner. Let's go to Phil. And Joe Rutman off, of, and there you see Bliss trying to put the move on Toby Butler. Looking high on the outside, back straightaway, final time. Butch is trying him on the outside, Mike. Butch Miller goes to work, faints high, looks low, comes up high again. It'll be single file, no change of position. Skinner wins it. Rutman is second. Toby Butler is third. See him moving up on Coach Jerry Glam. We're going to put Jerry one more lap behind. He said, hey, Jerry, come on, I'll make this race just a little shorter for you. <laughs> Let me on by here. And the truck he's catching there is pouring some smoke out. Yep, see a little smoker there. But Hornaday comes off the corner. Down the front straightaway he comes. Smooth sailing in the checkered flag for Ron Hornaday. Third time this year. Led almost from start to finish. Gave up uh, the lead just a couple of laps for uh, for Joe Rutman. There you see his wife giving a celebratory hug to one of the uh, crew members there. I think that was the, the deciding factor right there, Mike. That traffic, and Dave got hung up behind it, but he made a great run. Put a lot of pressure on Skinner. Mike Skinner comes off the corner, and again, the good wrench Chevrolet will go to victory lane. Dave Rosendi's his second, and here's the battle for third. Give it to Butch Miller with Joe Rutman fourth and Steve Portengay, a fine drive to fifth place. Butch Miller with a key pass at a critical moment will get to third. This is fourth and fifth, and it may be decided at the wire. Will Corelli try to pull something off here with Butler? Crowd on his feet. Checkered flag balls for the fourth time this year on Mike Skinner. Butler held off Corelli for fourth and fifth. The runner-up spot to Rutman. Third will be Butch Miller. number and it is a one-two sweep as Bodine comes across right on his tailgate and finally the F-150 will go to victory lane here at Bristol we're going to be doing the quick out of here remind you that Sports Center will be coming up next the celebration is on and that was well deserved he had to start in the back did a terrific job to get it to the front here 
but I'll tell you what, give it to Dennis Setzer. What a great, hard job of driving. Tremendous race also for third. Going into turn three as Rick Corelli gets on the inside of the car number 16 as we watch these leaders. 30 closing. Here's Corelli going at it with Hornaday in the final moments. They're coming down to the line. At the strike, give the win to car, uh, truck number three. Across the line, it will be Skinner followed by Setzer, Hornaday, and then Corelli. It doesn't get any better than that. Well, standing right. ovation all around this racetrack for the NASCAR Super Trucks. What a show! On some traffic, the TJ Clark truck there with a lot of smoke coming from it. Butch goes inside it. Here comes Skinner three comes on the inside. Here's Skinner down on the inside, charging for the finish. He puts the fender right in the door of Butch Miller. Here they come out of four, side by side, to the line. I think you can give it to Miller. I think it's Miller. Boy, but I it's think it's Miller inches. by two inches as Skinner waited the time and tried to pace himself for a perfect shot. Pulled up, it may have been an inch or two short. Boy, it was stay, close. Stay on short track. Too close to call. <laughs> Lead all but one lap. The lap to halfway. Hornaday off the final turn with Rutman right behind him. This is the battle for fourth. Skinner gives Bodine a bump in the tailgate there. The checkered flag waving. Hornaday is your winner in truck number 16. Ron Hornaday picks up the inaugural super truck visit to Heartland Park in Topeka. Very happy Hornaday crew on Pitt Road. The Dale and Teresa Earnhardt owned truck. The Papa John's Chevrolet. We'll be back to talk to the winner here at Heartland Park in a moment. for second, back through about ninth position, and it is a melee. Wow! Oh. Red spins right in front of him, and everybody missed him. And so the dash to the checkered And they spin and wreck up there again. Number three and four, Skinner takes the checkered flag. St. Amant wrecking down the back stretch, and two or three more of them tangled up in turn numbers. But fire. Four, we got one on fire up there. Butch Miller, that's Butch Miller's Rebestas truck that's uh, on fire up there in the corner. Wow, what a finish. And he's going under him. Something wrong with Corelli. He just didn't get down. He didn't protect the bottom. They don't touch. Clean, hard, knuckle racing. One left to go. Hornaday up front. Wow, I can't believe that. No point racing here, folks. Or last chance. And you saw. The six truck tried the bottom. They made a little contact. Here comes Skinner. Checkered flag. Ron Hornaday to win it sideways. Whoa. Boy, they love their stock car racing here in New Jersey, and they gotta love super truck racing. What a finish. You know he's there. One to go, he's alongside, and they will go door post to door post for the final lap. And he doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Oh, and they go up the hill a little bit, but Jess will give some room coming off. Here they come, and Skinner's right back there. Skinner sitting back there, says, boys, don't wreck the run and take me out, beat me a hole. Here they come to the checkered flag. Who's it going to be? I think it may be two points to call. This is unbelievable. What is that, about the fourth or fifth time this year they finished side by side. One of them was an absolute photo finish. Labonte comes home the race winner. He's laughing it up and looking over and congratulating the runner-up, Bodine. And Skinner makes a big move in terms of the championship. What a night. Oh, there he comes along. And contact, Bodine. Enough to continue. Bodine has spun at turn four, and it looks like Rutland's going to win the race. <laughs> wow. Oh, the yellow is out. The yellow and white. Now, this race can't end on the, on the yellow. That's, Wait a minute. Checkered flag. Oh, yeah, they're throwing a checkered flag. They throw the checkered flag on Rutland. And then we see the 18 is finished, and the 90 truck, I guess. Let's see, Benson would have been. Second or third, we'll sort that out when we come back. 
Bodine has nothing for Butch Miller. We got trouble for Chase on the last lap, but it's not going to impede the progress of Mike Bliss out of Milwaukee, Oregon, as he takes the checkered flag and wins the Lowe's 150. Welcome to the big leagues, Mr. Bliss. <laughs> Hornaday down toward turn 11. This will be for the final time. Ron Hornaday in the Papa John's Pizza Chevrolet looking for his sixth victory of 1995 in this inaugural Super Truck season. Comes out of 11 to turn 12. The little left-hand kick heads for home. Checkered flag. Good job. Real good job. Wally Donalback comes home second about four seconds behind. Put, uh, put him through the test today, just a couple of laps ago. And Mike Bliss moves on the inside of Ernie Irvin going down the back stretch. They're running up on some lap traffic. Bliss moves up high on the racetrack. What a great battle for second. Ernie breaks it loose coming off the, off the corner. They get the white flag. And it looks like Bliss may have the second position. He does. He moves by Irvin to take it from him. The move east. Swept the shop at Richard Petty's, had a couple of pickup rides, started a few Winston Cup races, took a long time for him to get his career on track. He rented some equipment from Richard Childress. Childress kept an eye on him, liked what he saw, named Skinner to drive his super truck, and as he takes the checkered flag, Mike Skinner is the first super truck by Craftsman Series champion, wins the battle and the war. Ernie Irvin comes home a couple of tenths of a second behind in second place. Well, Folks always say, how do you win a championship? What would you do? What would you do? That's what you're supposed to do right there. <laughs> you start up front, you run up front, you stay up front, and you win the race. And here they, comes Irvin. I think they both hit it. I think they both touched the wall. I'm pretty sure both I increased it. Coming down, Checker's about to fly. The NASCAR Super Trucks coming to the line. They're going to open their season on this mile and a half. That's the word we get. To the, and here comes Skinner trying to push him out. Crowd is on their feet and screaming to the strike. Jeff Bodine, Skinner, Ernie Irvin, Miller, Jimmy Hensley, Rick Corelli across the stripe. Hey, that was fun. John Nemechek finishes himself seventh. We'll take a break and be back with some closing thoughts this afternoon. Oh, look at him wiggle. Man. Look at Little now, he's going to go inside. Oh, oh, and a, oh, and a spin and a crash. Oh, no. And Chad Little's Little. going to beat Michael Walker back to the line. And this will end the race. Incredible. Incredible. Steve Grissom, I, I guess he just checked up because... He was loose all the way through three and four and just had to get out of the throttle and then it set off a chain reaction. Well, what a bad way to end what was an absolutely wonderful and exciting race. It's too bad it had to end with a bunch of junk sitting down in turn four. We believe that nobody was hurt in this thing, but it sure did, sure did damage a lot of equipment. Here comes Chad Little to the stripe to get the checkered flag. Here is Jerry Punch. And they are celebrating down here in the Chad Little Pits and a big smile from co-owner Mark Rippon and Mark, congratulations. It's just about half, I guess. Now. They were probably celebrating at breakfast. Chad Little is half a lap away from piling up back-to-back -back wins. If he comes around this time, he'll lead 177 laps today. He could wreck wow. now and win. I tell you, he's got a tremendous lead. Wow. Congratulations to Chad Little. That's just a, that's a, a great experience. Now the Harris Teeter Bayer Aspirin Racing Electronics Ford will go to Victory Lane. Chad Little has led all but 20 laps today, and he wins by 10 seconds over Mark Martin. Terry Labonte is third, Johnny Benson is fourth, Morgan Shepard fifth, sixth to Phil Parsons, seventh Derek Cove, eighth to Mike Wallace, all on the lead lap. Kenny saying, don't do anything stupid. You have enough real estate in between you. Oh, yeah. For the checkered flag and for his second Richmond win in a row, Kenny Wallace, the Red Dog Hunt.
He'll go to victory lane. <laughs> Terry Labonte is second. Johnny Benson is third. Here's the battle for fourth. Left car holds up Parsons. Oh, Wham! McLaughlin will get fourth. Randy Keller Porter. fifth. And Randy Porter stops short of the line. Stevie Reeves gets by him. Bill Parsons Everybody is trying to get to the line. The car stops inches away from the start finishing line. Oh, man. in the pits and look at Jim Bound. He will finish in third spot. Good run for Jim Bound in the Lux Chevrolet. Benson will keep the point lead over Terry Labonte and David Green who came in here 24th in points after a very tough start to the season. He's on his way back toward the front. White flag in the air, checker to follow, David Green. Chad Little comes off a corner sideways there. He didn't give up. I tell you, he ran the last lap as hard as the first. And Chad Little ran down to within a second and a half of David Green at the checkered flag. is second, McLaughlin third. Keller in fourth, and a crash at turn four on the checkered flag lap, Doug Hebron. Can he hold him? So half, half a lap to go. go. Yep. Tracy's having some kind of problem. He's not running up to speed like he was earlier. Chad Little coming off turn four, coming down to take the checker flag. Third career victory for Chad Little. Daytona, Rockingham, New Hampshire. Three of the five super speedway races so far on this tour have gone to Chad Little. Elton Sawyer finishes second, Mike Wallace third, Mike McLaughlin fourth, and Johnny Benson is fifth. Tim Fedewa from the state of Michigan who've given us so many great racers. Looks like they've got one in the making here. He's done an awesome job all day long. He's been fast. He's been out of trouble. He's raced patiently and done a great uh, uh, job in lap traffic. Checkers ready to fly and we have a new winner in Grand National Racing. First career win after 67 starts goes to Fedewa. Tim Fedewa is headed for victory lane. You know, it's great to see a, a team that hadn't won a race yet win a race, and uh, the excitement and the, uh, you know, and the happiness that, that, that circulates. And, uh, you know, you, this is probably uh, one of many to come for him. He's a great race driver. 
Back straight away. Last time. First and second place cars. Uh, about a length apart, and here comes Green at number three to the outside. Jeff Green making his move in the Earnhardt car. Chad Little staying there. As they come to the line, back to the outside goes the number three car, and he didn't have enough. The win goes to 23, Chad Little. Now he earned that one, did he not, Ken Squire? Wow. We're going to go to victory lane with Chad Little for the fourth time this year. And we'll be headed for Speed Street a little later, right here on TBS. Gives them a little spirit. Maybe I could do this, too. Protégé of the late Richie Evans. He drove dirt modifieds for Norm Foster, tried super modifieds for Clyde McLeod and the Sherry Cup folks. He won the National Modified Championship. And today, he wins his first ever Bush Grand National race. Second, Mike Wallace. Third, Ricky Craven at a photo finish for fourth. Yeah, I believe the 57 got the 32 at the line. He got up on the outside down there in the corner. I believe he got it. It looked like Jason had a little bit better angle coming off the corner, and he might have beat Dale Jarrett back to the flag. I'm not sure, though. Well, we'll have to take a look at that one. Okay. Decades ago, 41-year-old Larry Pearson going for his 15th career win. He has said, I have the fire inside to show everyone I can still win races. And the checkers are out, and he's done it. Larry Pearson pulls it off. Spartanburg, South Carolina, is going to be celebrating right now as the two-time Grand National Champions have done it again at Myrtle Beach. Terry Labonte going for his seventh Grand National victory. Ready to bring that number 14 down for the final time. Streaking into the final corner. The Iceman indeed coming here at Watkins Glen. And Chad Little with an outstanding performance for second. And Ricky Craven for third in a battle for fourth to the line. It's McLaughlin getting back by Jeff Green as they come to the stripe. What a run by McLaughlin. Chad Little cuts Johnny Benson's point lead from 178 to 154. This is race number 14, the grand decision to be made in Miami at the Homestead Motorsports Complex. Final left as we go down the back straightaway here. Jarrett is uncontested. Pearson in second. Kenny Wallace up to third and trouble as Bowley crashes with Randy Porter. Off the final turn. And headed for home. Dale Jarrett to win it. You see Kenny Wallace coming strong there in third place, but he does not have time to close in on the second place car. And Jeff Green squeezes off Dennis Setzer for fourth place. McLaughlin sixth. Keller seventh. Chad Little up to eighth and Mark of Knight. What a finish. Wow. But if he lets Spencer get on that right side, I know something. Well, I tell you, that's about the most erratic move I've ever seen on the last lap. He'll bought it at Pocono. It may not happen in turn three, but likely in the tri oval. I think Chad's got it. Kenny Wallace has made a strong bid. He's in third place now as they come down the final straightaway. Trader. Kenny Wallace there. Trader out of gas. Here they come. Final time down into the trioval. Chad Little closes off the bottom. Spencer goes for the apron. He's not going to get there. And Chad Little wins the two fastest, longest races on the Bush Grand National Circuit. And that's why I won four times here. Yeah, that Chad, was a little mirror driver. Chad Little won that race <laughs> down here in turn one. And Mike McLaughlin. White flag on that third place battle. Oh, 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 oh. Sawyer goes around going into turn one. Well, Sadler will get third spot and oh, around he goes. Sadler spins in the back straightaway. Checkered flag. Chad Little wins it. Mike McLaughlin is second. David Green is third. Larry Pearson picks up the fourth spot. And unofficially, Ward Burton is fifth. Chevrolet. His 63rd career Bush Series 
start, and Jason Keller is less than half a mile from victory. He will take the checkered flag. And Jason Keller gets his first win. You think that young man is happy to prove? Celebrating on pit road, 25-year-old Greenville, South Carolina driver gets win number one in Bush Grand National Series racing at Indianapolis Raceway Park in the NASCAR Kroger 200. seventh, eighth, and ninth spot. As Mark Martin has won the Gatorade 200, picks up his second Bush Series victory here in 1995. We'll come back and talk to the winner after this. You can see Garrett get a little bit side there. Sideways in off the corner. Mark moves right in on his back bumper as they head to the back straightaway. Garrett has the bottom. Mark tries the big sweep off turn four. Not enough time. Dale Jarrett. Picks up his second victory of the season, and that battle for 13th erupted in turn two. Jeff Green and Chad Little slugged it out for 13th place. That's probably going to put uh, Chad Little all the way back to about 20th if I'm bigger. The circled over downs. Wow. Sandler, get at it. Checkered flag is in the wind. Here comes Johnny Rumley of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. What a Out win. of turn four to victory lane. He'll go. Sadler is second. Parsons is third. And it's side-by-side -side for fourth between Mike Wallace and Steve Grissom. Folks, people say, why do they race so hard when they're being passed by the leaders? That That's right there why. is why. To stay on the lead lap. Stay on that lead lap. You've always got a chance. Get in a position to win. He'll be back tomorrow with over 40 Winston Cup stars in the running of that 500-mile race we hope you'll be here to enjoy. Here comes Mark Mark in first, putting a lap on Kevin LePage. No, just tucking in behind him as he comes to the line. LePage will wind up in 16th this afternoon, and Mark Martin accepts the checkers. Mark Martin has done it again. Win number 20 in Grand National Racing for the Win dixie Ford. He's getting some momentum on the Whoa, outside. Boy. White flag. Man. Last chance, folks. Boy, this is going to get <laughs> mighty close. <laughs> Come on, Mikey. Benson's got one chance now, Mike. He's going down into turn three. He's got one chance, and that's to get on the bottom side. They're going to be three no, wide. he's going oh, up top. Time. He's got the room. Three Wallace wide. thought one he was coming time. for the bottom. They are three wide down to the line. Contact, Bodine. and Bodine wins it. Is that a race or is that a race? All right. <laughs> when Mike Wallace and Johnny Benson banged each other all the way to the flag and took just enough momentum off them, the Todd Bodine pulled a Ronnie Bouchard and snookered him to the flag. <laughs> I've seen that act before. Oh, boy. See, Benson's right that. front there where he got over. Well, I don't care. 
It was a great <laughs> win for Todd Bodine. It was a great run for Johnny Benson. And Mike Wallace drove his heart out. That's yeah, all you can race. say. There's no loser well, right now. Three. Can uh, Larry Pearson go with him? What's going to happen here? Back comes Can he Wallace. Oh! oh! They all wreck. The all and Dale Jarrett comes and Dale around. Jarrett oh, is no. going to come home. The top three are in the wall. Dale Jarrett coming to the line. This is going to bring out the caution. Kenny Wallace in the wall. Hermie Sadler is there. Larry Pearson. And the winner to the strike is Jarrett. He gets the white and the yellow flag. And that race is over. Wow. All he needs to do is come back and get the checker. But and Vita was going to come home in second spot. Dale Jarrett. He's a happy Washington guy. Flag right is there. out. Has the side curtain down and he's ready to wave it up. Hudson folks who just came on board with him get themselves a win in the first race ever run at the new Homestead Motor Sports Complex. What a finish on this one. Jarrett pulls it off. He waited, didn't want to go up and mix it up, and what a good decision that was. Two wins, Johnny Benson. Here he is, pulling off the helmet and coming down. Pulling up is Dale Jarrett, the guy that won the Daytona 500, made history there, has made history this afternoon here in Miami at the Homestead Motorsports Complex. waited too long. He used to, many years ago, before the restrictor plate phase, you did it coming off a of turn four, and then it yeah. kept moving farther back around the racetrack. Now yeah. I guess you got to do it, what, at the start-finish line when you get the white flag? Down for the checkers, one more shot. Short. Earnhardt does it for the sixth time. Wins the Bush Clash. A great start for the week. But can he end that problem on Sunday? In the final win it after 17 tries. Earnhardt has won the Bush Clash. He's coming. He'll try, you can rest assured, but I think he has too much real estate between him and the four cars. And then there's a lot of real estate. About half a second back to Dale Jarrett third, Rusty Wallace fourth. Closing down the first 125 mile qualifier. Sterling Marlin. Coming to the line in car number four. And he's going to take this one home. And here's the battle for third as Jerry can see it. And then a little on the back. This pack of cars that we see coming into the screen right now. That's the battle for the positions in the Daytona 500. And the 43 of Bobby Hamilton, I think he got it. As did Joe Rutman. And I think Joe Nima checked. Jeremy Mayfield will check them all for you shortly. But there's your winner. Beginning right where he left off last year, defending 500 champion Sterling Marlin. There's the 21 car. It's found its way. Just behind him is Greg Sachs trying to get in. Leaders in the back straightaway. And Earnhardt puts his foot down. He pulls out a couple of car length advantage. Now Martin locks up with Jeff Gordon and comes back up on number three Earnhardt. But Earnhardt will make that car awfully wide coming off the of turn four. I don't think they'll be able to do anything with him. Gordon's going to try it on the outside, but he'll come up short. Earnhardt to the inside. Gordon to the outside. It's Earnhardt's sixth straight in the 125-mile qualifier. Dale Earnhardt's done it again. Won the clash. Won the 125. But can he win the great American race? Couldn't get the momentum that he needed. Closes in, coming to three. Sterling Marlin stays in front. Earnhardt nipping away at him here. Perched in second place. Trying to lurch out there. Launch one final assault out of turn four. Down they come. The short 1,600 foot straight away to the finish line. And the winner of the 1995 Daytona 500 is again Sterling Marlin. Morgan McClure, ninth career win, and three of them have been here at Daytona. 
textbook win. If you want to know how to win at Rockingham, just watch this 24 car and go back and study what he did all day. That car does not have a mark on it from running into anybody. It's just been very quick. For the win, Jeff Gordon, career victory number three. Bobby Labonte, best career finish. Second place today. Third will be Earnhardt. Fourth, Ricky Rudd. Here's the battle for fifth. Fifth place. Dale Jarrett and a career-high sixth-place finish for Steve Grissom. Mighty gives it a good shot. Mike Wallace easing by, and those leaders have worn out everything on those race cars. Limping, but coming home in first. It's Terry Labonte, followed by Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace here at Richmond International Raceway. And that means that coming up, we're back with you in September. Happy crew down there. September the 9th, Terry Labonte will go for three in a row on this track under the lights of Richmond International Raceway. Second straight win for Hendrick Motorsports. Gordon last weekend. Labonte here at Richmond. Still separated by about four car lengths. Here comes Bobby Labonte's final bid to take the win here this afternoon. They move through the third and fourth corner. Off of the corner onto the straightaway. It looks like Jeff Gordon is going to win it. Yes, indeed. Gordon wins the Pure Later 500 by a car length or two over Bobby Labonte. There's Terry Labonte finishing in third position and Dale Earnhardt in fourth. And the celebration goes on in the Jeff Gordon pit. Here's Jerry Bunch. No, I didn't get up beside him that time coming off the two. Nope. Marlin is in turn three and four. We'll keep an eye on him. Here are Earnhardt and Musgrave going through the corner. Here is Marlin taking the checkered flag, winning the race. Let's watch the battle for a second. It goes to Earnhardt by about a half a car length. Ted Musgrave third. Here's a battle. Steve Grissom finishes in sixth and Michael Waltrip seventh. off the fourth corner. Is he going to win it? Yes, he will. Jeff Gordon takes the checkered flag and wins his first career short track. And look at Daryl Waltrip lead Bobby Hamilton down and Waltrip by a car length holds on for third. Here's John Kernan. Who is running in seventh position a lap down. Earnhardt now off of corner number three corner number four and Dale Earnhardt has won his first of 1995 extending his streak of winning at least one race every year over the last 14 years the streak starting in 1982 here's John Kerner with Andy his third straight here at Martinsville, his fourth win of the last five events at this half-mile facility. For third. Oh, and Larkin gets the car out of shape. He and Earnhardt almost get together. The roof flaps do their job. Don't hit it with him. Don't hit it. Oh, he hit the wall. Meanwhile, he got a race back to the line the racetrack and Sterling Marlin avoids him. He just slowed down and, and uh, got out of the way. Here we go. It comes down now to a battle between Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon off of corner number four. Jeff Gordon looks to the inside as they come to the tri-oval. will lead them down. However, he's got the advantage and there's the checkered flag. Mark Martin wins the Winston Select 500. Gordon is second. And Morgan and Shepard finishes third. Now you talk about a happy bunch. They never really have won that good here. And here's a more than one. Here comes Bill Elliott to the high side of Bobby Lamont. Waltrip led him across the line. Lamont was next and then Elliott. But Earnhardt has been getting out of the corner a little bit better than Mark. Here they come. Earnhardt comes out of the corner. Mark down in the corner. They come through the corner, and 
and for the first time in his NASCAR Winston Cup career, Dale Earnhardt wins on a road course. There's a checkered flag. He beats Mark by about three car lengths. Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, Karen Labonte, and Ted Musgrave are following. It's his second win of the 95 season, his 65th career win. Now look at Rusty Wallace still trying to pick off positions as he comes alongside Ward Burton. If he gets side by side with Craven, that could nullify any battle for fifth. Todd Bodine is going to bring him home on this, the final lap of the Winston Select Open. For car owner Butch Bach at factory stores, Todd Bodine gets the checkered flag. Schrader is second, Presley is third, Wallace and Speed. Well, I bet Junie Dunleavy, the owner of that 90 car, is dancing in the... He is. Fifth I, place gets him in. I, Here's the pit of the winning crew. Third. Sterling can make 80 grand right where he is. Off turn four. The Brickyard 400 winner becomes the latest winner of the Winston Select, Jeff Gordon. For Rick Hendrick, DuPont at Chevrolet will go to Victory Lane and pick up a check tonight for $300,000. Wow. <laughs> That's a good career for some people. <laughs> Sterling Marlin slowing down. He's come out of fuel. He's dropping back and he's headed on the pit road now. They told him he, he was, was running for Yep, yeah, deja vu. Here, Here comes Gordon. Bobby Labonte for the checkered flag. Checkered flag is down. And the winner of the 1995 Coca Cola 600 is Bobby Labonte. We've waited a long time for this one to come together. The former Grand National Star in 1991 is their champion. He's just pulled it off. 13th at Sears Point, the last time out. And he's done it tonight. He's given Joe Gibbs a victory in one of the greatest Winston Cup races of the year, the Coca-Cola 600. The last lap. I don't know whether he's going to make it stick or not, but he's trying to pass Kyle Petty on the outside. And here comes Musgrave. It's a three-horse scramble. Okay, Left sure. car up ahead is Joe Nemechek. He won't be a factor. Labonte draws alongside of Kyle Petty's Pontiac. The Ford drops underneath. They'll come off turn four for all the money. Here comes Musgrave he's underneath Bobby Labonte coming off the corners. Dead heat coming down for the flag. It is a dead heat. Kyle Petty wins it. Who finishes second? It looked like Bobby Labonte to me for second, but I'm not real sure. Barry Dodson there has reason to celebrate. It's his first win since June of 1990 when he and Rusty Wallace won at Sears Point. Will come Terry Labonte with Ted Musgrave trying to close in, but Labonte looks to be poised to pick up his second win of the season and the 15th of his career single file off turn three very close from third on back the victory Terry Labonte wins it 15th of his career Ted Musgrave second Schrader holds off Sterling Marlin and Hutt Strickland Just a little step off. Here's Gordon coming to the inside. Does he have enough? Yeah, he's going to make it this day. Yep. Labonte's going to do it. Yeah. Dale Jarrett looks like he's blown coming off the of turn four. And at the line. Yeah. The 27th annual Michigan 400. Belongs to Bobby Labonte. Fantastic victory for this young man, brother of Terry Labonte. Someone said, you know, what do you want to do in your life? He said, I would like to be more like my brother Terry, the 1984 <laughs> national champion. He gets stronger with every race, six in points coming into today. There's your winner. And hey, folks, Sterling Marlin, Sterling Marlin with his finish today in seventh spot, he's going to move in front of the point standings. 
Gordon oh, still has the lead. We have contact between a couple of cars, but everybody keeps it straight. They battle for position. Sterling Marlin down into the outside of Earnhardt. He has it. He's by Earnhardt. Jeff Gordon, though, has about a car length and a half lead on Marlin and Earnhardt as they battle for second position to the third and fourth corners. That battle side by side should give the race to Jeff Gordon. Here they come. Jeff Gordon has the lead. Earnhardt moves to the inside. They scramble. It's Jeff Gordon winning. And I think Marlin got second. Man, man. Oh, and we have contact between a couple of cars as they cross the line, but everybody is okay. Wow. Mark Martin, I should say Jeff Gordon, has won the Pepsi 400. He's kind of eased up, and Morgan Shepard's closing in a little bit on him. He pulled it down to about 15 or 20 car lengths, but it looks like Gordon's day. I think he was just trying to make it in. Off turn four into the checkered flag, Jeff Gordon wins the Slick 50 300 at New Hampshire. Morgan Shepard is second. Third goes to Mark Martin, the pole sitter. Terry Labonte is fourth. Ricky Rudd is fifth. He's had trouble earlier. Anything left in Jeff Gordon's number 24. Six car interval between first and second spot. Ricky Rudd has come to third. Musgrave is in fourth. Robert Yates looks on with Larry McReynolds as down comes the checkered flag to fall today on car number 28. Dale Jarrett has done it. He's won the Miller 500 at Pocono, Pennsylvania. Jeff Gordon right on the rear bumper for second spot. But he is stymied in his chance and still racing. Here comes the 94, Elliott streaking to the line in front of car number seven. That is the rig of Jeff Bodine that finishes in six today, moving to fifth. Elliott with a great last run, another race coming to the line. And here's Jeremy Mayfield across the strike in front of John Nemechek. second Earnhardt Chevrolet right there Sterling Marlin who won the Daytona 500 the last two years looking stout here they come for the tri oval let's see if anybody's going to make a move Earnhardt tried to battle the inside but there was no place to go he comes up on the outside of Jerry but he won't make the pass Sterling Marlin will win Sterling Marlin has won the 27th annual Die Hard 500. Morgan McClure reigns on those restrictor plate tracks. Indianapolis, and the interval remains about the same. About seven or eight car lengths. Dale Earnhardt in command of the Brickyard 400 as he enters turn number three. And there is no battle at the moment for second position as Dale Jarrett has settled back behind Rusty Wallace. And now for the final time, they come through corner number four. Dale Earnhardt enters the straightaway and looks for the checkered flag this time. And he sees it. Dale Earnhardt has won the second Brickyard 400. Goodrich Crew celebrates Dale Earnhardt's 66th victory in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. And Waltrip. Oh, and Jimmy goes over the curves. Oh, yeah. Spencer goes right. around here. Right. Waltrip gets on through it. Derek Cope gets through it. Spencer out in the grass. He's going to come back. He's going to lose about four or five positions. Uh-oh, yeah, he's coming right. around yeah. again. While all that is going on, Mark Martin comes through corner number 11, and Mark Martin is three for three at Watkins Glen. He has won the 10th annual Bud at the Glen. It's his 16th career win, third on a road course, and third in a row here at Watkins Glen. And four of the last five road course races have now been won from the pole. So that means that Bobby the Bonnie should make it. And 
Musgraves behind him is going to try to push him and help him. You watch for Terry Labonte to go by. And I guess you're not allowed to push while the track is still under green conditions. And Musgraves right back in. Here comes Bobby Labonte to take the checkered flag. Labonte will win it. And now in second spot, it'll be, looks like Terry Labonte in the five car. And Jeff Gordon will pass him. The four car will pass Elliott as they come off of the turn. Rusty Wallace will pass him. Cost him a lot of positions. but still has his traffic to contend with. Jeff Lodine has to come in for a splash, splash of gas. Or a flat tire or something. Now let's see, they're down to four or five car lengths. And a slow car by Ben Earnhardt, he's right on his back foot. Let's see what strategy he pulls. No, Lavani is sideways and wins the race. Crashes and he wins anyway. How about that? Whoa! Labonte crossed the line, sideways, took the checkered flag, hit the wall, and still comes out the winner of the Goodies 500 over Dale Earnhardt. Oh, wow. Well, only a pin in the end the night. I was going to say, Jeff Gordon has Terry Labonte way up ahead of him. They come into turn number three. But you know, Terry Labonte will get out of his way if he comes in the play because he's a teammate. Jeff Gordon looking good here in turn four. The battle is for second place between Earnhardt and Wallace. Gordon wins. Earnhardt finishes second. Rusty is third. Chevrolet clinches the Manufacturers Championship. Jeff wins his sixth of the year, his eighth of his career, his seventh Super Speedway win. And he steps another inch toward that NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. No, this might have been a foot. <laughs> this might have been a foot. This is a great, great victory for Jeff Gordon and the DuPont crew. Checkers about to fly for the fourth time and 41st Winston Cup victory coming out for Rusty Wallace. But the story is right here. And there he is waving as he crosses the line. And the battle for second at the strike. How about Terry Labonte? Gordon now has a 279 point lead over Earnhardt. From his seventh victory of 1995. Boy, oh boy. Ray Evernham, Rick Hendrick, the car owner, Randy Dorton, and Hendrick Engine. Powers off the corner, all but laps Sterling Marlin, and the checkered flag waves over Jeff Gordon. Bobby Hamilton, a well deserved second place for the Petty Enterprises team. Congratulations there going out to Robbie Loomis. And Jeff Gordon will leave Dover with a 309-point advantage over Dale Earnhardt. Terry has the position from Rusty. Let's see how it shakes out as they enter turn three. Rusty moving alongside. Earnhardt comes off corner number four. He wins the goodies 500. And for second place, it's Terry Labonte. And, and Bobby Hamilton will finish in four spots. Jeff Bodine and Bill Elliott. He started second and comes home a winner here this afternoon. Becomes the fifth driver to win a short track race in 1995. It's his fifth short track win and his 17th career victory for Mark Martin, winner of the Tyson Holly Farms 400. And Jeff Gordon did finish third, but I tell you what, Labonte almost passed it as he came down for the line. It was a great battle for the, for, for the third spot. Up the outside and he's on his way. Back comes Terry Labonte, giving it everything he's got. But Earnhardt has him for second. Coming to the line. Probably number six, Mark Martin across the line. And Earnhardt coming home in that second spot. He has cut Gordon's point lead to 205 this afternoon. Checkers are flying at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for Mark Martin. Earnhardt and Sterling Marlin got together in turn two. They're okay. Off turn four for Bill and Gail Davis, for Chris Hussey, that MBNA Pontiac team. Ward Burton scores his first Winston Cup win. And out of turn four, Darrell Waltrip gets hard into the wall, and the rest of the field gets by. He made contact, perhaps, with Jeff Gordon. What a wild finish to a day that 
Dick Bergeron started out saying had been bizarre so far. Seventh, Morgan Shepard. Mark Martin has settled it down in eighth. Rick Mast in ninth, tenth, a side-by-side -side battle. And out of turn four to notch his 16th career Winston Cup victory. Chesapeake, Virginia's Ricky Rudd in the tied four. A big wave to the crowd as he crosses the line. Derek Cope and Earnhardt were side by side for second. There's no room for it to get in there. <laughs> I'm sure they will find some room. Now he's a half a lap away from victory. His fifth win of 1995, 68th career win, 42nd on the Super Speedways. It's his seventh win here in Atlanta. It ties him with Cale Yarborough for the most wins. Dale Earnhardt wins the 1995 season finale at Atlanta Motor Speedway, the Napa 500. But the championship goes to Jeff Gordon. And there he is. He did not have a good race. Jeff Gordon wound up 32nd, 14 laps down to Dale Earnhardt, but he is the champ. Here's Bill Weber with Andy Petrie. <laughs> 